Right then, pot pickers, <clears throat> welcome back. You find me here in the polytunnel for me to the perfect temperature in here today. I'm going to take some pictures of the polytunnel, but the mess, the mess where you're just standing here is horrific, so I've got to tidy up this mess. But everything's coming on lovely here. Uh, I've been watering some bits and bobs, but I do have to, I'm just looking at the grapevine now, even though I pruned it a few days ago. I've still got to do some more pruning on this big grapevine, but it's all coming on. So I'll show you, I'll put some pictures up of various things during this little video. Now, I did do, or I, I did harvest the very first container of potatoes that I planted, but I can't remember when I planted them. It'll be in my book somewhere, but I don't know where my book is. And I was going to do a little video of the first potato harvest, but the potatoes were, were, there were some beautiful potatoes and they tasted delicious, but they was obviously harvested too early because I planted them late, later in the season this year, which is fine. But the one thing I did notice was, oh, first of all, the only reason why I harvest the potatoes is because I've got visitors from Australia and I thought it'd be nice to harvest some of my own potatoes to have with one of our dinners. That was one of the reasons. And the secondary reason, which was more important than the first reason, uh, but I only found, that, found it out until I picked the potatoes, was even though I thought I'd been watering the potatoes enough, the compost and the soil mixture was way, way, way too dry. Way, way, way too dry. We've had weeks and weeks and weeks of hot weather without it raining, so I was watering them and watering them. And then we've had some thunder, thunderstorms and heavy downpours of rain, but a lot of the water falls off the leaves and drips onto the other leaves and just falls on the floor. So just check that you are watering your potatoes enough, yeah, uh, because it'll have an adverse effect further down the line when you come to harvest the potatoes. So we've gone to all this trouble and, and expense and t time and care and effort on planting these potatoes. So you've got to make sure you look after them. Right, what are we doing? Well, I had a little problem. You know, I planted up some strawberry plants on that new raised self-watering system there. Works wonderful, but the, the mice found the, found the way up there and they ate all the strawberries. But I did take a load of, uh, put a load of runners in little yogurt pots and believe it or not, this is one of the runners. Now this was just surviving. I've cut the, the cord off. This was the run that came from the mother plant. And I'm looking at it and thinking, bloody hell, Sean, we're going to have a load of strawberries on there. But I've already loosened it off. If you look at the root structure, yeah, this, this is bone dry, yeah. But look at the roots on that. It's just desperate for extra moisture and nutrients. So I've just cracked open a new bag of nice compost. And I've bought some of these. I bought some of these. So I'm going to transplant these into there and that will do for this season for these, yeah? And I'm going to put all these up on a self-watering system up here where you top the trays up with your watering can and, uh, and hopefully I'll get some strawberries off these and then these plants, the root system will mature into these big containers for this season. This will be a massive root ball and then uh, for next season then I can pop them on into the big 10 litre ones or eight litre ones, whatever they are. I can't remember the name of these strawberries. I'll try and put it up on the screen if I can find it, but these are the ever bearing strawberries where you get smaller strawberries, but they grow for a longer pe uh, period of time. So that's that, that's what I'm gonna do with those. And then when I empty these containers, I'm gonna put some more of the uh, strawberry runners from a centenary strawberries in these because they're getting too big they need doing this and then if i can i'm going to because i've got plenty of these i don't know how many i bought but i bought quite i bought quite a few of these how many have i bought sure oh luckily for me i bought 50 i bought 50 uh and i bought these from uh elixir gardens Yeah, Elixir. Those people. I bought a lot of my stuff from there. 
you know, they sell all sorts of things. So give them, give them a look if you're in the UK. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is, I've got some other little strawberry runners off my Colossus plants that are getting big. So I'm gonna pop those on into these and I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna have them all up here. And then that way, it's not taking too much energy and moisture and nutrients out the mother plants. And then now, as I say, these will be able to get a full nice established root, which is what it's got, but it's desperate. So they'll be in these for this season. And then uh, next year, I can plant them up into, uh, into bigger containers because I need to make some drastic changes in this polytunnel for next year. Uh, but that's, I'm gonna worry about that later. So I've got my cup of tea, I'm just dragging on now. I've got my cup of tea, no tea, no work. Oh, that's nice. Uh, also, I've done a, a follow-up video on that water pump, but I'm in the process of making a uh, non-return valve for it, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, I'll show you these when they're all potted on and in position. Happy days. Right, I hope you can see me. So, I've taken out the, the runners, the first eight runners, which were the Colossus variety of strawberries. Those have been potted on into those deep uh, two litre uh, rose, rose pots, those rose containers, what they call rose pots, elongated tubs, uh, ideal for things with a long root, root stem. And now I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 12, 13, 14, 15. I've done 16. Oh, there's one there. I've done 16 of these uh, centenary uh, strawberry runners, planted them on. I'm going to give them a couple of weeks and then I'll pop them on once they get a nice established root. It won't take long. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I've got 19 of the ever bearing strawberries so yeah it's all going on so all i've got to do now is i've just got to this has got water in but it's got no uh, it hasn't got a lot of feeding so i'm going to put i'm going to put just a watering can 10 liters of uh, tomato feed in there and then that'll give these a, a, a boost there's still some runners coming off which i'm keeping because i'm going to try and increase the amount of strawberries for next year the grapes are looking Unbelievable, I'll try and put a picture of some of the grapes. So yeah, the floor's full of leaves because I've cut down all the leaves off the courgettes and all the rest of it. Courgettes coming on nice, everything's coming on a treat. So tomorrow, I'm gonna concentrate on just clearing, sweeping up and clearing up. But unfortunately, I've got a rabbit living up there somewhere in some of the bags of stuff. So I've got to get rid of this big rabbit if I can get it. But apart from that, job done. I'll take some, I'm gonna take a little bit. Let me turn the camera around, stay there. I don't think you can see me face, but you don't need to because look, oh, nearly fell out. Look at, the, look at the bunch of grapes. Look at the grapes here and here. This is coming on a treat. I've just pruned this a bit. I don't know whether you can see. Can you see those bunch of grapes? Fantastic, all looking good. Job done, time for, time for a cup of tea.